Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we are in my bedroom, we are sat on my bed. I'm wearing much cozier clothes because I didn't want this video to be as formal and put together as my other ones. And that is because we're gonna be talking about some really deep and personal stuff today. Um, the goal of this video is to teach you all how to overcome heartbreak. I have seven main steps on how you can overcome heartbreak, get over a breakup, move on from somebody. This is a little bit of a longer video. So the way that it's structured is first of all, I'm gonna be going through these seven steps on how to overcome heartbreak. They're in chronological order they are all steps that I have used that has helped me get through any breakups I've had in the past or any times that I've had my heart broken after that I'm going to be talking about a few key tips that I used alongside those steps um, things I avoided just little things I did that helped me along the way and sped up the process and then right at the end of this video I'm going to be answering all of the questions you guys sent me on Instagram around heartbreak you guys sent in your own dilemmas um, some other questions and also asked me a lot about my own personal experiences so I will answer those at the end of the video but first First, let's talk about the seven steps on how you can beat heartbreak and get over someone. So the first and most important step is to feel your emotions thoroughly. And what I mean by this is feel all of your pain and all of your sadness at its highest level. If you need to look at old pictures of them and listen to sad songs and watch rom-coms and eat ice cream and not get out of bed, then you need to do that. Feel sorry for yourself for as long as you need to. I think when breakups happen, a lot of us have this tendency of, you know, we'll cry a few times and then by the end of the week, we'll be like, oh, they don't deserve my tears or I'm better off without them. And I I don't need to be sad about them and we kind of force ourselves to move on but personally I don't think a week is enough time to feel all that sadness and really process the fact that that person isn't in your life anymore and process all of the reasons and the hurt behind that breakup crying and being sad and reminiscing over them for a month or two or even more than that just means that later on down the line you won't be missing them again and you won't relapse back into that sadness it's a phase that you need to experience right at the beginning of the breakup so you can be done with it and then start to move on the worst mistake that you can make when trying to overcome heartbreak and move on from somebody is denial and so many people do this because they don't want to cry over somebody or spend ages being sad over somebody and so they go into denial and all of these extra feelings are still coming up maybe a month after the breakup where they still feel sad and they're missing that person they bury it the more that you bury all of your feelings and don't deal with them straight away it will be like this massive ball of negative emotions just growing inside of you that's either all going to come out at once way down the line when you don't want it to or it's going to come out bit by bit and you'll start to be one of those people that projects your negativity and your sadness and your emotions without even realizing it. And if those two things don't happen, then the worst will happen, which is you'll eventually move on, get into a relationship and bring all of that sadness and those trust issues and those insecurities that you didn't deal with beforehand into that relationship and the next person you're with will have to deal with them, which will then lead to another breakup and then it's just an endless cycle. So as horrible as it is to sit in your bed and cry for days and maybe eat ice cream and lose motivation and not want to see anybody, I honestly think it's essential to get all of that sadness out of your system because there will come a day where it's done okay so the next step once you've been really really sad for as long as you needed to be and you literally now have no tears left to cry the next step is to make a list this is a personal favorite of mine this is something I have done with every breakup I've experienced. Whenever my friends are trying to get over somebody, I always say it's time to make a list. So the list is absolutely essential. You cannot skip this step, which is why I put it as number two. And the purpose of the list is to prevent you from going back to them, texting them, asking for closure, calling them, try and work it out. We don't want any of that. That's messy and you broke up for a reason. So the way to prevent all of that is to make the list. Now I recommend writing it in your notes app on your phone because that waits with you everywhere you go and that's what you want. So the longer the list the better and this list is going to be split into three parts So the first third is going to be all of the things that you don't like about them This is going to be a really negative part of the list, but it is essential You need to write down anything you don't like about them All of the bad things they did in the relationship the times they made you cry the times they made you hurt um, Why you broke up why it didn't work out why it will never work out in the long run things about them that make you cringe Like icks and stuff like that just a bunch of really bad things about them Which essentially just turn you off that person. The second third of the list is going to be reasons that you can't wait to be single, the benefits of being without them, and why this breakup is a really good thing for you. And then the final section of your list is going to include all of the qualities you want in your ideal person, in your soulmate, or like the one. So you have to imagine this person that is out there waiting for you, that you are truly meant to be with, which is why you broke up with this person, and all of the qualities you want them to have, which this person that you're trying to get over doesn't have. I encouraged my best friend to make a list, and he was getting over somebody, and he came to me he was like listen I really want to call them I really want to get back in touch and I was like 
shut up and read the list and he was like you know what you're right and he read it and then everything was fine and that prevents you from calling them when you're healing over heartbreak you will have those phases where you feel so lonely you just want somebody to call or you just want them back in your life and you want to be in a loving relationship and in those times nostalgia is your worst enemy because it will give you this romanticized view of who that person was and your brain will completely forget about all of the bad they did and that will just lead you to wanting to text them and call them because you're forgetting all of the bad that happened in the relationship the list prevents this and so every time you have that urge to get back in contact with them or you start to doubt why you even broke up that list will show you all of the bad reasons why they're a bad person you shouldn't be with them why it's such a good thing to stay single and yes you're gonna have some lonely phases but in the long run it will be really good and thirdly that there is light at the end of the tunnel and the person that is truly meant for you and actually deserves your love and your time and your effort is out there waiting for you with all of these qualities that you've listed that you can't wait to have but if you go back to this other person that you're trying to get over you're giving all of that up Okay, so this next step also links to the fact that nostalgia is your enemy. And this step is remove any trace of them from your life. So this means blocking their phone number, deleting their phone number, in fact. So if you do want to call them, you literally have no way of doing so. Deleting old text messages, Instagram DMs, Twitter DMs, whatever you have them on, remove them from it. So there is literally no trace of them in your phone or in your life. If they got you gifts, if you have like little cards and things that they got you scattered around your room, get rid of them because not only is that taking up physical space in your life and in your room but it's also taking up mental space and it's really preventing you from getting over them your bedroom is your sanctuary chances are it's the place that you spend the most time in you sleep there you wake up there every day you get ready there and so if you have little things scattered all around your room under your bed in your drawers hidden away in your wardrobe of things that remind you of them you might not always be able to physically see them but in your mind you know that they're there and it's taking up all of this mental space of you thinking about them and constantly having reminders of them and you need to grab a bin bag and you need to shove all of that stuff in there and throw it out and also what links to this is all of your photos and videos now this personally to me is the hardest step um, and I only actually did this recently so any breakup I've ever had I never delete photos or videos of that person even if I've gotten over them because I've always been a believer in at one point that person made me really happy and we had some great memories and they were a part of my life you know I'm not just gonna erase that and so I moved on from people but there were always photos of them in my phone until December 2020 I deleted every single photo of any ex I've ever had anybody I've ever dated if you went through my phone you would literally think I've never dated anybody in my life and it was really hard to do in the moment especially for one of my really long-term relationships I was with somebody for over a year we had thousands of pictures and videos and I know that they're a bad person and they're not for me and we'll never be together and I'm also over them but because I'm such a memory hoarder and they literally took up over a year of my life I didn't want to remove pictures from a whole year of my life it was hard but I did it and I felt so much better after doing it. You aren't erasing certain moments of your life. You'll always have those memories in your head to look back on of like, you know, this is when I was young and I made mistakes and this was my first boyfriend or whatever, but you don't need pictures popping up in your phone saying a year ago today you were with this person or, you know, this is what I was doing back then because when you commit yourself to being single, you're gonna have so many days where you wish you could call someone or you wish you could go on a date and have those happy times and experience that good energy that you once created with that person. And if you have all of these is in your phone once again you are over romanticizing that relationship and you were only seeing the good and you were forgetting all about the bad and all about the reasons on why you guys broke up in the first place getting rid of all of those memories prevents you from trying to get back with them and also prevents you from seeing them in the false positive light that pictures make you see them in step number four is understanding breakups this doesn't even need to be about your own personal experience but developing this mindset on why breakups need to happen in general and I think once you learn this mindset and you start to see breakups in this light it will make the healing process a lot easier so what this mindset is is that all relationships serve a different purpose and that we need to go through multiple breakups before we actually meet the one life is not a romantic movie and we're not going to find our soulmate the first try and be with them and live happily ever after and that's because as you start dating in your teens into your 20s maybe into your 30s you're growing through that process and you're learning more about yourself while you're in relationships and you're also learning what you do and don't like and also what you want in your ideal partner and you will never know that naturally without having been through a relationship or a breakup first you might be dating your sixth person and they've shown you all of these qualities or all of these traits that you really want in a future partner which you didn't even consider before and I feel like we'll only learn those things while we date different people and we lose different people because it's all a part of our process of growing as individuals and also learning what we want in somebody else after every breakup you go through you'll be like well what did I learn from this and what am I going to take from that relationship into my next one to make it better or to find somebody who's more compatible to me and this leads on to step number five which is acceptance once 
once you've felt all of your own emotion and once you've recognized all of the negative traits in that person and you've also realized breakups are necessary, you can then reach acceptance, which is let's say it's been four months since the breakup and you're not still completely over it. You might miss them even though they did you wrong and they don't deserve you, but you accept that and you're like, I miss this person. I know I shouldn't and I know they don't deserve it, but I do and that's okay and I'm still in my healing process and I'm still getting there. Acceptance is also accepting that it was never gonna work out in the long term. They were never the one. You were never meant to be with them. Also accepting that they're not the person that you thought they were. They might have changed towards the end of the relationship or done something which the person that you thought they were, the person that you fell in love with, wouldn't have done to you and wouldn't have hurt you in that way. You accept that that breakup with that person was essential and you needed to learn those lessons and take that experience away so you can go into your next experience or so you can go on to meet the person you're truly meant to be with and you had to learn those things first to grow. Acceptance was a game changer in my breakup because once we broke up, we were very on and off. And throughout those stages being on and off, I realized that the person that I fell in love with and the person that I wanted to be with so badly, while I was talking to him kind of after the breakup and we were trying to get back together, I realized he wasn't that person anymore and I wasn't that person anymore either. And once you accept that you've both grown since then and you're different and you're heading in different directions and you are never gonna be those two same people that were once in love and made that relationship work, you will then accept that the relationship that I'm missing doesn't exist anymore and literally isn't possible anymore because I'm not the person I was in that relationship and they aren't either. Anytime I felt a little bit nostalgic or I was reminiscing about the person he used to be and how he used to treat me and how we were together, I realized that person is gone. He's not that person anymore. He's someone completely different. And so I'm not missing him. I'm just missing a memory. Acceptance is also about finding closure on your own. A lot of people go through breakups and because they're heartbroken, they wanna get back in touch with that person and talk to them. But what I've learned is, you will find all of the closure you need on your own and the disrespect and the way that they hurt you and the fact that you already broke up is all of the closure you need. You will find closure on your own by going through these steps of acceptance and accepting that it's never gonna work out long term. They have shown you their true colors and that is the person they really are. You guys aren't meant to be together and you have to go through this hurt and this pain and this breakup to continue on your journey of actually finding a true long lasting love. Step number five is my favorite and this is practice self love and start taking care of yourself again. Practicing self-love is all of those things that you would have given to that person, your time, your effort, your energy, your affection. You put that all back into yourself and you grow as a person. It's about creating a routine and becoming the ideal version of yourself, whether that's waking up earlier or starting to read books or doing that thing that you've been putting off for the longest or finally getting around to something which you couldn't really be bothered to do. All you have at this point is yourself and you can give all of your time and energy and money and affection to you. I mentioned in my last video, which was a Q&A, that I'm really just focused on being single right now and I don't want to be in a relationship and of course I do have days where I feel really lonely and it would be nice to be in a relationship and be nice to have somebody tell me they love me but the one thing that keeps me going is I have more time now than ever to focus everything on me and what I want to do I don't have to worry about somebody else relationships are very very time consuming and draining and they are also really expensive and it's nice to be able to spend all of your money on yourself being single is such a blessing because you have all of this time to focus on becoming the best version of yourself and while you are committing to self-development and self-growth growth eventually you will attract the person that is truly meant for you into your life and they will align with you and your needs and they will also have gone through their own pain and their own journey of self-growth to meet you at the level that you are at and you both had to go through your own relationships and your own breakups to meet each other at that level practicing self-love is really important because if somebody really hurt you and made you feel insecure it's time for you to relearn yourself and learn all of the amazing qualities that you have that anybody else would be lucky to have self-love is also an essential step in making sure you don't get into another relationship that's just like your past one and to make sure that you don't get hurt in the same way again. By practicing self-love you realize your worth and your standards go way higher. You learn that everything you have ever needed is already within yourself. That way when somebody approaches you or someone's trying to date you or be in a relationship with you, you love yourself enough and you know everything that you have to offer that you wouldn't even settle for less and that you know exactly what you want and what you need and what you expect and that you are happy being alone and not settling in a relationship it doesn't give you 100% of what you want. And once you have done all of those things you would have reached the last step. Once you conquer this last step, congratulations, you have finally gotten over heartbreak and this last step is forgiveness. Forgiveness can be really hard but is the key to letting go of all of that anger and that resentment and once you have mastered that you won't even pay any attention or thought to that person ever again. You won't have any sort of negative thoughts around that experience or that time in your life anymore and once you have done these six previous steps to this forgiveness will be a lot easier. Even if the hurt was really extreme and they cheated on you I still think it's really important to forgive somebody and think 
you know what that was on you you have your own issues to deal with i'm not going to take it personally i got what i needed from the relationship i walked away i healed i'm happier i'm in a better position now i get to end up with somebody who is actually going to treat me right you showed me your true colors thank you for that i'm over it the relationship is done okay so those were the main seven steps on how to get over heartbreak but now i'm going to go through a few little tips which i used along the way which really helped so number one is writing a letter this i did right at the beginning of the breakup and this will prevent you from once again going back for closure and trying to get back in contact with them so i actually wrote an email and i addressed it to my ex and i wrote down all of the things i felt how much i missed them anything i wanted to say to them and get just get off my chest and i sent that email to myself and then i deleted it and then it was done and i think writing down all of your feelings whether that's on a piece of paper in an email to yourself on your notes app is a really good release on getting all of that emotion and that anger out of your system it really works and a lot of people actually recommend this tip the next tip i did was making a breakup playlist so once i had felt all of my emotions thoroughly and i cried it all out i actually deleted all of my sad songs and instead i made a playlist that was full of songs about not needing love and being an independent woman and being happy being single because honestly i feel like music really influences your mood and the more that you're listening to songs about heartbreak and sadness the more you're going to feel that way another tip i use which i still use to this day is journaling and practicing gratitude when you're going through something so difficult like a breakup it can seem really hard to find things to be happy for but it can be something as small as the lunch that you made that day or the friend that you saw that day or the roof that you have over your head and once you start practicing gratitude you start to feel a little bit more positive and much happier in your current situation without that person healing from my first heartbreak took eight months and yes it was a really long relationship but eight months trying to get over somebody is still a long time despite that i never judged myself and i allowed myself to take all of that time i needed to feel sad about it and to feel sorry for myself and to miss that person and my final tip is actually something i avoided um, and this is when you go through a breakup do not try and jump into another relationship and do not try and date so after my worst heartbreak i actually did this because one of my friends was saying you know to get over somebody all you have to do is just move on to somebody else and date someone and i tried that and it really didn't work for me and so moving forward anytime i go through a breakup from now on i would not try and date somebody after i think this is also a lot to do with personal experience and who you are if you find that that works for you then great but i think it's better to stay home be sad deal with your emotions directly and get over that person before you try and move on and get to know other people and jump into another relationship okay so now i'm going to be going through all of the questions that you guys sent to me on instagram we have quite a few i'm going to be answering a few of these questions just because i don't want this video to be too long so um number one somebody asked did you have any apprehensions or regrets about ending it with your ex this is the ex i spoke briefly about in my last video which was the q a um i was extremely apprehensive about it when i broke up with him i still wanted to be friends with him and i didn't want to lose contact with him completely and i was really afraid of hurting him and never speaking to him again i was also afraid of it just being really awkward and losing all of our mutual friends all of my apprehensions turned out to be accurate because all of those things actually happened <laughs> but in terms of having regrets i really don't i'm really happy i ended that relationship it was definitely the right choice for me i did lose some friends as a result and i don't talk to him anymore but that's just the way it is but i would rather be where i am now knowing that i'm not settling in a relationship than just staying in a situation because it's easy and it's comfortable somebody asked what's the best way to get over a heartbreak i think the two most important tips is to feel all of your emotion and not be in denial because that would just elongate the whole process of healing and also reaching acceptance i think once you've accepted that it's over you and that person will never work out and you've also accepted the person that they are and all of their negative traits um, and the things that you don't like about them will get out of a heartbreak much faster what do you say to a friend who is heartbroken i think the most important thing is number one don't judge them on how long it takes them to get over that person even if you think their ex is really undeserving and a really bad person that they shouldn't be crying over them you don't understand what they're going through or what their relationship was only they do and all you can do as a friend is to support them every step of the way and tell them i'm here for you no matter what you need and no matter how long it takes what to do when the other person literally doesn't understand where they went wrong they're in denial and not sorry this is a really hard situation i've actually been through this but as hard as it is you can't make them understand where they went wrong or where their faults are a lot of people lack self-awareness and it's really scary how many people do people can do you so wrong and still think that they're not at fault and that they're a really good person and there's nothing that you can do about that that's on them at the end of the day you know what they did was wrong you know that you don't want that in your life and that's why your relationship ended but as long as you know that they did and you're out of that relationship and you're not suffering the consequences of their actions anymore i'd say that you're still winning have you ever experienced heartbreak and when i have experienced heartbreak twice um the first one which i have referred to a few times throughout this video was the worst um it was with my first love we met when we were 17 we were together for a year and a half 
and that heartbreak took me eight months to get over. Can you be friends after a breakup? Honestly, I think that you can. A lot of people say that you can't, but I think in order to be friends with somebody that broke your heart or that you're no longer in a relationship with, you first of all have to take a lot of time away from each other to heal and to experience that emotion and get over them and realize that they're not your person and that you're not gonna end up together. This isn't my person, this isn't my soulmate, I shouldn't be with this person. Once you've accepted all of that stuff and you've healed from any of the hurt that you've had from that breakup, I think it is very much possible to be friends with them. But first you have to do all of that work and healing beforehand. Do you believe in right person, wrong time? Okay, I love this question and I briefly spoke about this on Twitter like a few months ago. I think if you actually believe that someone was the right person, then time shouldn't even be a factor. I know relationships can be hard and there can be factors where you don't have a lot of time to see each other or they're moving or they're gonna study for a year abroad or something like that but if you really think that they're the right person and that you're truly in love with them and you want to be with them long term time should not be a factor and I think that as scary as it can be you should take that risk anyway to continue to be with them and try and make it work and not just end it because it's like oh well it's the wrong time right now isn't convenient for me to be with you even though you're the right person Okay, so those are all of the questions I'm going to answer in this video because the camera's about to die and it's flashing, telling me that it's about to turn off. Um, I really wanted to answer more, but I won't have a chance to today. Thank you to everybody who did send in questions though. I hope this video helped you and you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let me know what you want to see next and subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.